Welcome to CED Mo's Boz online video series. Today we're going to talk about uh, controller based alarms. So today we're going to talk to you about uh, controller based alarming. Um, this is something that's been available since version 24 of Studio Designer. The thought process to bring is to bring all of the alarm information in the controller and store it there rather than having the alarming being done by computers or PCs out on the plant floor. Um, if you have two different PCs or two different surfers um, and one of them needed to be rebooted and they're handling their own alarming, now you have two different alarm lists with different timestamps for the same alarms. So it, we've, Rockwell's thought was to bring everything into the controller and store it there so everything can be served up to the PCs. So back in version 24 up to version 31, the option was to um, use an alarm block. So if you wanted to make an alarm out of this alarm condition um, bit here, your option was to use these ALMD for digital and ALMA for analog alarms. Um, so all you would have to do, it was actually pretty easy. You just uh, enable the block using that alarm condition, um, give it a tag. Um, if you had an acknowledge bit, you could use that and a reset. If you wanted to programmatically enable or disable it, you could do that as well. Um, and then once that's all set up, you just bring up the configuration. And this is where you would put the message you would want displayed on the alarm page on your HMI. When the alarm comes in, the severity, uh, condition, latching, everything would be configured here. And then you wouldn't have to do anything on the HMI side. You would simply just turn on your alarm and event server. Um, and the alarms would be served up automatically. There's, it kind of cut the work in half. The problem with these blocks is that they are a little bit um, memory um, aggressive. They take up a lot of a memory. So uh, starting in version 31 and using the L8 controllers or the 5069 compact controllers, you could use tag-based alarming. So in other words, you don't need this rung of code here, we could delete that. And then over here, we could just right click on our alarm condition and go add alarm for alarm condition. So that brings up the same kind of page where we can uh, name the alarm, um, put the input, so the input is this input tag on delay, and then again, our message that we would want displayed on our HMI. So just that easy, and then if we apply it, we notice down on the left side here, we now have this alarm manager. We can bring that up, enable that alarm. So again, once this is enabled, um, we can use it. It would just automatically come in in our SE application with alarm and event server. Um, it also come in automatically on any panel view 5000s, which are also use the alarm and the events and uh, controller based alarms only. There are no HMI alarms on those panel views. Um, for a panel view plus, uh, so if Panel View Plus 7, you would actually want to use the um, alarm. Since this is our alarm, you would want to use the alarm condition, the bit that you would use as your trigger, alarm condition, or I'm sorry, alarm dot in alarm. So that's the name of the alarm from here. And in alarm means, you know, it came into alarm. So that's the tag you would end up using as your trigger for a panel V plus in, in factory talk view ME. But that is our uh, controller based alarms. Once again, thank you for watching. And don't forget to check out future and current videos by subscribing to CED Mosbaugh Electric Supply on YouTube or visiting www.mosba.com slash media. Thanks again.